Welcome to this video where I discuss the concept of similarity transformation. The concept of similarity transformation. We have already noted that the choice of states for any given system is not unique. And that is where we end up with a system represented differently using different state space models. We can transform from one state to another by carrying out a transformation that does not change the unique features of any given system through a concept called similarity transformation. Suppose a system is defined in terms of the state variables x, x defined by x1, x2, all the way to xn. We may desire to transform the state variables x into state variables z defined by z is equals to z1, z2, all the way to zn. The requirement or the necessary condition for this to happen is that x and z must be linearly related. We can choose a linear relationship between x and z defined by x is equals to pz, all these equation one, where p is a non-singular transformation matrix. For us to transform from the state variables x to z, then we need a linear relationship between x and z, and that linear relationship can be represented by equation one as x is equals to pz, where P is an unsingular transformation matrix. We can differentiate equation one to obtain X derivative will be equal to P Z derivative and call this equation two. If we consider the state equations of a linear time invariant system as X derivative, is equals to AX plus B U. This is equation three. And Y is equals to CX plus D U. This is our equation four. We can rewrite equation three as follows. Where there is X derivative, we replace that with PZ derivative as PZ derivative is equals to then a x represented as p z so p z plus b u all this equation five if we pre-multiply both sides of equation five by p inverse if we pre-multiply equation five by p inverse then we can write p inverse p z derivative will be equal to P inverse APZ plus P inverse BU. You can call this our equation six, but we know that P inverse A, that is P inverse P is equals to I on an identity matrix. So P inverse P is I, an identity matrix. Then we can write equation six, We can write equation six as Z derivative is equals to P inverse APZ plus P inverse BU. We can call this equation eight. Also, we can rewrite equation four, equation four, where there is X we substitute with PZ as follows. 
So equation four becomes y is equals to c p z plus d u. This is our equation nine. You notice that equations eight and nine are similar to equations three and four. Equation three was x derivative is ax plus bu and y is cx plus du. Only that the matrix A in equation eight is P inverse AP. The matrix B is P inverse B. The matrix C is CP and the matrix D remains unchanged. We can redefine these matrices as A hat, which is P inverse AP, then B hat is P inverse B, and C hat is CP. CP. And this is the transformation that we need to carry out to transform the system from the state variable x to z. And our equations eight and nine becomes z derivative will be a hat z plus b hat u, and our y will be c hat z plus d u. And you look at this equations, they are very much similar to our state equations in the state variable x. The only challenge is to determine a suitable matrix P that is able to transform the systems from a state variable x to a state variable z without changing the features of that given system. Under similarity transformation, two things happen. One, the characteristic equation, the characteristic equation, and hence the eigenvalues of the matrix A remain unchanged. So if we transform from the matrix A to the matrix A hat defined by P inverse AP, the characteristic equation of the matrix A and hence its eigenvalues does not change. Number two, the transfer function of the system remains invariant. The transfer function of the system remains invariant under similarity transformation. We can choose a suitable transformation matrix P that is able to transform from the state variable X to Z without changing the characteristic equation and hence the transfer function of the system using a number of methods. And in my next video, I will be discussing the methods of determination of a suitable transformation matrix P that is able to transform from one state variable to another without changing the characteristic equation and the transfer function of the system, which are the features that uniquely defines any given system. Otherwise, thank you for watching this video.